Hello! Today we're going to talk about Cumulative Layout Shift, or CLS. CLS is one of three new core web vitals introduced by Google in May of 2020. And the reason you may be hearing about it is because in May 2021, they will start to impact SEO. Google has told us that the three core web vitals, largest contentful paint, first input delay, and cumulative layout shift, will feed into search signals for page experience, for mobile search at least, come May 2021. Now, cumulative layout shift measures unexpected changes in the page layout throughout the page lifecycle. So you can call this layout stability. What it's trying to measure is this kind of experience, where something changes on the page which causes you to lose confidence in the UI, or even may cause a misclick, where you click on an element you weren't intending to. Cumulative layout shift scores are currently available in PageSpeed Insights, Google Search Console, and a host of other third-party as well as Google tools. In PageSpeed Insights, you'll see it under the field data here in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, with a couple of values. One is your 75th percentile, in this case 1.31. Now this is far greater than Google's target for good, which is 0.1. You can also see a bit of your distribution. So I can see 43% of my experiences taken from field data from real users met the threshold for good of 0.1, whereas 53% were worse than 0.25. This tells me there's room to improve on the CLS score for this page. This data in PageSpeed Insights is taken from a rolling window of 28 days from Chrome browsers that have opted into anonymous usage statistics. You can also get this data, which is another view of the same information in Google Search Console. It'll tell you how many of your URLs are failing the CLS assessment for Core Web Vitals. So CLS measures unexpected changes in page layout throughout the lifecycle. Let's talk about what unexpected means. So if you had a hamburger menu on your page, when a user taps the icon for the menu, they expect something to change. So if there is a layout shift at that point, it's not a major issue. So an unexpected layout shift is defined as one that does not have a click, a tap or a keyboard press immediately preceding it by half a second. The score that you see in PageSpeed Insights is a sum of all unexpected layout shift scores throughout the whole page lifecycle, from the page starting to load through to the user leaving the tab. So let's talk about what a layout shift score is. If we take Google as an example, say I wanted to put an advertising banner at the top of the page and I wanted to inject it with JavaScript. What might happen is as the JavaScript executes, after the page is already rendered, we get a layout shift here. So the banner has injected itself above the logo pushing the logo in the search bar down. This is a layout shift. And the way we calculate the score is by taking the product of impact fraction and distance fraction. Now this sounds more complex than it is. It's basically how much of the visible viewport changed and by how much did it change. First, we need to know about our unstable elements. That's the logo and the search bar, which were forced to move. To calculate the impact fraction, we need to follow the unstable elements to calculate the union of how much of the viewport was consumed by these elements before and after the change. So we can see in blue here the before and the after, and the union of those gives us our impact fraction, which in this case is about half the visible viewport, so 0.5. Now distance is a little bit easier to calculate. Take your unstable elements and work out how far they moved. In this case, it was about just under a third of the page. Those maths geniuses among you may have been able to work out the layout shift score already. It's 0.5 times 0.3, which is of course 0.15. Then this is one layout shift that happened on one frame. Um, if this layout shift was an animation that spread out across multiple frames, each layout shift would be smaller, but they'd still sum to the same total score. And of course, if you have multiple layout shifts caused by multiple unstable elements, then these scores add together to get your total score for the page lifecycle. And we want to look for 0.1 as our maximum for any experience. So you can see how that can be quickly exceeded. To diagnose them, you can use Chrome Developer Tools, the performance profile. In this case, we can see one layout shift in the performance profile, which I've selected. The layout shift was across one frame. We can see just above a 33 millisecond frame, um, but the score was one. So this is basically saying the whole page, the whole visible viewport, changed 
and then there's a lot more diagnostic information including the elements that moved and by how much they moved. So the key points are that CLS is measured in the field. Whilst lab tools, um, such as PaySpeed Insights lab section, can measure cumulative layout shift, they miss out some really important parts. Because CLS is only impacted by elements that change the visible viewport, and that changes by user, by device, by scroll position. So capturing it in the field is critical to understand the quality of experience you're delivering. And it's captured for the whole page visit. So if you profile just a single page load, you may be missing something that happens below the fold as users scroll. So it's quite a tricky one to get a full um, picture of to diagnose. Finally, some common remedies that you may be able to implement for a quick win. If you have images on your site without width and height attributes, adding those will be a really quick win so the browser knows how to lay out enough space in advance. Pre-allocate space for dynamic elements such as the ad banner we saw on the Google homepage, and perhaps consider using font display optional to prevent layout shifts caused by web fonts. That's all for today. Hope to catch you next time.